I love books about toxic, obsessive relationships. But this was just, oh my God, like I could not put it down. You read because you think it makes you better than everybody else. The end of the world. Hi, hello, and welcome back to a life-sized hormonal Tetris block that really needs his coworkers help. Book talk isn't all that bad if you're willing to look past the romance indie author at faked her death or the prioritizing of quantity over quality. It's truly a dangerous, time-consuming, and confusing battlefield that I decided to throw myself on the front lines of, and surprisingly, I made it out alive. I just couldn't restrain myself after being recommended a few pieces of classical literature such as Does It Hurt? He bites her lip bloody and drowns her in shark infested waters. Now this is my type of romance. I originally decided to explore this niche sometime around last year in hopes of getting fresh book recommendations, but instead I stumbled across author stalking readers, weird marketing, hyperconsumption, minors being endangered, romanticizing unhealthy relationships followed by trauma coloring books, book talk takeover, and the current love triangle between mask talk, biker talk, and book talk. Not in that order. It feels like once a month some divine entity visits and rocks the entire book talkian universe. Before I get started and make people mad, I just want to say this video is simply a critique on book talk from my perspective. It's more of an adventure through the silly things I've seen. Every community has a good and bad side. Today I'm focusing on the dark side of book talk and the flaws inside of its delusional, sealed off terrarium of modernized popular demands. Uh, and this. Keep reading for me. For those who are lacking an organic introduction, something you've definitely seen before are imagines. Her trying to seduce him because that's her only way out of the school her mom sent her to. So she constantly shows up too late or tries to get noticed negatively. So I don't know about you, but someone pissing me off isn't seductive. So I really like this guy and I think I'm gonna try to make a move. Oh really? What are you going to do? Well, I was thinking about putting shattered glass in his shoes or maybe like never respecting him. So romantic. She does all the possible things to annoy him or to get closer to him. When he visibly reacts to nothing, she tries to gather all her confidence. When being on detention and scrubbing the floor, she starts showing him her underwear. He tells her he doesn't want to see her underwear again. So she shows up without any the next day. Like this one, a lot of these scenarios fantasize about unhealthy relationships, the mafia, and teachers for some reason. I've mainly seen them being used to recommend books through painful visual storytelling or, in the case of an author, market their wonderful stories. When the 35-year-old mafia Don wants his enemy's 18-year-old daughter pregnant and then just describes a very non-consensual act. Imagines have always been clowned on for being corny, but now they're derivative, which is seemingly worse. Before they were shower thoughts, now they're 300 paged proper books. When she's laying in the bad boy's lap and his brothers come in making a lot of noise. Wake her up and I'll rearrange your teeth. Aw, so romantic. I wish someone would knock someone unconscious for me. When she bakes cookies for him, but he just makes fun of her until she cries. Then moments later, he listens in horror as she's hit by a car. I thought she was in the kitchen. Did the car go through the house? Uh, I hope my husband likes these cookies I'm baking for him. Your cookies suck. They taste horrific. Your ass at cooking. You suck. Anyhow, I'm gonna go. Maybe I should just make cupcakes. Oh, no. Ooh. 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 It sounds really bad in there. Now you may be thinking, these imagines are so horribly written. Surely nobody has ever read a book because of one of these, right? Her stalker is so obsessed that he flooded her grandma's garden with his... <laughs> Yeah, there will be a review of this one later. For the sake of humanity, I'm just gonna assume that the majority of the people writing these are young and have no clue what the diabolical text they're reading means. I mean, that has to be it, right? Because there's no person with a fully formed brain going, you know what I'm gonna post today? I have to tell the world about this. <laughs> Something that BookTok is actually amazing for is self-promotion and blowing up authors that, without the platform, probably wouldn't have much reach. I've seen plenty of great writers get boosted, but I've also seen some that don't really deserve to be. There's a certain delusion I've seen a widespread transmittable virus, and that is becoming a book. And I don't mean, like, literally. Whether you read for entertainment or escapism or both, you're meant to feel disconnected from the real world, but when you unhealthily read too much fiction, you disconnect yourself from reality and form your own internal norms based off of extremely unrealistic environments. Like if you start leaving stalker notes for your college professor, um, you're probably you're probably gonna get locked away. So when there's an author promoting an unhealthy relationship based off of real events in her life, it's kind of unfortunate that Book Talk decided to push her book into the demonic algorithm. When she plays truth or dare with her dad's best friend, she chooses dare. He leans closer, kneel before me and unbuckle my belts. Yeah, sure, the story could be true like she's suggesting, but the reason I'm including Including this in the imagines portion is because I refuse to believe the series she made following this video. My dad's best friend just stumbled across this money dad's best friend novel I wrote, which is all about him. Oh no, I hate when I publicize things that can then be publicly accessed. Ugh, darn it. She then went and made a TikTok of her messaging him, and the amount of people buying this fictional marketing tactic just shows the actual true disconnect of book talk readers from reality. Why haven't you finally deleted that book? Why should I? It's a good book, brings me money. So you make money writing stories about us? It's always the quiet ones. When has this ever been said in real life? This is book dialogue. It's not about us. I have no desire imagining you in that way. And what are your desires then, Sienna? That's none of your business. Um, I'm not gonna show the rest of this on YouTube now. For some reason, if you own a leather jacket and a motorcycle, the book talk girls want you to pick them up from Barnes & Noble and kidnap them. Is book talk girlies are just different. You were all warned. Who warned me? I never received such thing. Never put your hands around a book talk girl's throat. That's the first thing you're supposed to know. We enjoy it because it's attention. <gasps> no. It's because it's attention? Babe, what should I wear tonight? Wear something nice. Is this good enough for you? Uh, no, I don't think they'll let you into the restaurant like this. 
my mom will be there, and I just think the mask might be a little too much. Wow, I'm a dark brooding man. I cover my face and drive a little bike around town. I hate to say it, but this love triangle between mask talk, biker talk, and book talk just feels like a millennial thing. Boo. I'm sorry. Bike talk is trying to claim book talk. My honest reaction. You're attracted to this? What is that? Ugh, oh, all the things you can do with that axe. Like chop off my head while I'm asleep in the cage under your bed at night. It's honestly free views at this point. The formula is simple. Book talk girls belong to bikers only. Um, it's, it's still going. It doesn't matter what you look like or how thick your unibrow is. Wearing a helmet is the new beauty standard for men, and millennial women will eat it up every time without fail. Barnes & Noble is a popular spot to purchase books, and so naturally, if a hot and attractive biker boy were to be there, uh, some feelings may arise. This is a dangerous combination. They know. I would unlock all of my car doors immediately, undo my seatbelt, and pretend to be asleep. I'm wishing you the best of luck in getting kidnapped. I really do hope it happens for you. My back hurts so bad. Can I just record the video like this? Is that okay? The line between reality and fiction is blurred so much on TikTok, it's nearly non-existent. It's so bad that this mini-series made about a book talk girl falling in love with a biker boy at Barnes & Noble popped off and captivated every lonely woman working a desk job in the universe. I am here, and there is one of these in this parking lot, and I am immediately suspicious. <laughs> Should we see if we can find him? I feel like a stalker. So I saw this Tesla 2023 Model S in the parking lot. I'm really attracted to people who drive those. So I'm hunting him down so we can have a romantic relationship. I feel like a stalker. Mm. What do I do? Ooh, woo. My anxiety is through the roof, but at least I've converted a new member. He asked for my favorite Spotify playlist. No way. Date is set for Tuesday. <gasps> ooh, woo. Ooh, woo. Ooh, woo. It's like I'm being shot every time he says it. Damn a wolf with a bow and arrow. Oh uh, yes, I also read in this pose. Miss you, I'm coming for you. I feel like anyone who hasn't been bitten by the bite of book talk can easily see this stage. I mean, let's just take a step back and look at how she chased a man because she saw the bike in the Barnes & Noble parking lot. She found him lurking in the romance section. They planned a date after she seduced him with horrendous sounds. Ooh, ooh. And then both posted on TikTok following a coherent and obvious storyline. And with all that being said, people still believed it. All right, book talk. I need your help. I went to a Barnes & Noble's today because if any of you guys are following along on the book talk trend, you'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah, so I've been hanging around a lot of dark alleyways in Italy. Uh, if you've ever seen the mafia husband trend, you'll know what I'm talking about. And I was browsing the romance section, husband does, and uh, I had some chick uwu at me, and I've, I've never been uwu'd in the wild. You should never really have to experience that, actually. In her part two, she's just covering how super unhinged and quirky she is. There's good news and there's bad news. Let's go for bad news first. He already knows that I'm unhinged. Ooh, wooing somebody in public has that effect. The good news. He already knows that I'm unhinged. The other good news. I got his number. Okay, that's a win. But he's a triple Sagittarius. No, it can't be a triple Sagittarius. How will I live on? All right. Hey. Here it is. First off, I want you to know this is not marketing for anything. There's no book. And Ooh Woo was actually inspired by how Kevin and I actually met. Yeah, of course it was fake. I feel like some of the frequenters of book talk need to pull themselves out of fictional land and realize they're in the real world with real laws. No school equals no problem. Now I'm gonna give you some options here. Who attends school? We have motorcycles, bears, ants, or kids. Dude, when have you ever seen an ant go to school? No, that obviously wasn't the answer. What are you, stupid or something? Who even thinks ants? Oh, what, you see a little ant? No. Ride a book talk, girl, save a bike. Hey guys, uh, I feel like we just used our brains a little bit. Uh, be able to see that this is a kid and stop. Book talk girlies, we must wait for this one. Let's keep him innocent for now. Or maybe you do know and don't care. Moving on from that, I want to talk about how book talk as a community has affected reading books and their quality. I see a lot of people saying that complaining about what's on TikTok is meaningless and people should just be happy that others are reading, but I disagree. No spice shouldn't exist. I was so disappointed in Cruel Prince just because there's no spicy in it. Oh, you mean the book with kids? 
in it, books containing spice are more likely to travel further through the TikTok algorithm than those without it. Now, this is bad. Why exactly? Book talks become an oversaturated platform where romance dominates above all. This wouldn't be such a problem if TikTok wasn't a colossal monetized monster that controls such a large portion of the publishing industry. Whatever sells readers in 15 seconds sells on bookshelves. If only romance is popular on TikTok, then guess who's getting published? TikTok is short form ADHD crack for people with horrible attention spans and disposable income. It isn't even on the same galactical plane as booktube. People buy things for the sake of it being a TikTok trend, just cast it into the void moments later. The constant consumption TikTok encourages is like no other. It's built into the app with TikTok shop and indirect paid ads. It's woven into trends and especially into communities like booktok. Communities that are huge, 29 billion views huge. So yes, there has always been bad books and cheap romance novels, but now booktok is telling the publishing industry, hey, are we like this? More dragons having intercourse, please. And if you disagree with what I've just said and think that TikTok has barely any control over what people are reading, uh, well, I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear about ByteDance's upcoming project. ByteDance, the parent company of TikTok, saw just how well booktok was doing and to capitalize on its success, decided to start an entire publishing company. It's still a work in progress and it's called the Eighth Note Press. This just means more cliche romance novels and more promo. Have you seen the TikTok shop ads? You can't even scroll two inches without being bombarded by junk. Now think about those ads, but they're books. Books about mafia boss kidnapping boyfriends who ride their tricycles around. They said that they only plan on publishing books from the romance or fantasy genre because that's what performs well, which is going to be horrible for authors. Aside from big book talk and the surface layer annoyances I've talked about so far, there is a good side where there is good amateur writing. With TikTok's new publishing company only signing people who write dragon smut, everyone else who doesn't fit into the mold will be casted off the face of this planet. All organic original content will perish under the reign of TikTok's dry promoted books. TikTok has shot a huge hole into the publishing industry and is a threat to originality, but I also just think some people are living inside of a detached dome. Yeah, there are some setbacks because of book talk, but setbacks are to be expected with any sort of trend hopping, so it's not the end of the world. If I want good book recommendations, why would I ever trust what's at the top of the book talk hashtag? It's like clicking on a sponsored link. If you walk into Barnes and Noble, you'll see spicy book talk signs and TikTok recommended. I saw someone freaking out about this in real life. Like you can just walk around, pure TikTok bubble syndrome. My only problem with this is the horrendous selection for sections such as Coquette, uh, where we put a little life and my dark Vanessa. It almost feels like the employees had no clue what the books were about, but uh, if we put a little ribbon on it, uh, no one will ever know. I've seen book talk recently being compared to fast fashion. Last time I checked, book talk didn't have any child labor. The better way to phrase what's happening on booktok would be overconsumption. Similar to fashion influencers that snap trends into existence just to have them burn out a week later, booktok has the same erratic pull. The constant demand for collecting books has put an alienation curse on anyone who's managed to fall into the trend trap. There's a standard of having to read 100 books a month and to spend all of your money on books to make it into reader nirvana. The booktok popularity pyramid isn't actually about reading, uh, it's only about how many books you can collect. This form of hyperconsumerism is leading to paperweights rotting away on a shelf, but hey, at least we get book unhauls. I am unhauling this entire pile of books and and I'm gonna tell you why. As a book collector, I like to go through my collection and pick out the things that are just no longer serving me. Either I read and didn't like them or I just simply didn't read them and I'm not going to. My bookshelves are out of control, so it's time for an unhaul. I'm getting rid of all of my books. Actually, not really, but I'm getting rid of these books. Do you see this? Uh, this is a library card. You don't have to throw money into the void. It's free. Unlimited books. Just give them back when you're done. I know, it's a crazy concept. A trend that's definitely come from the short lifespan impulse purchase book craze is selling annotated copies for more than the actual book is worth. Hello, I'm thinking of selling my annotated books. Each book would be around $35. If I were to sell my annotations, you'd get my deepest, darkest thoughts, or this. They show a little life, which is $15, so reselling this for almost double the price is a little crazy. My lip peeled back in a snarl. Why is that underlined? For fun? I don't have a top lip. I give up. I don't know how to snarl. Okay, so I kind of understand the appeal of wanting to feel like you're reading along with somebody, but to me the price is unjustified and I would get distracted. This is how I read off ADHD meds. One more page. Just focus. Everybody, Ooh, yes, you clap your hands. Oh, you got a broken heart. 18 just plus take a scene. Chance. He wants her to get the job. That was unexpected. Screaming. I audibly gasped. Now, annotations can be whatever you want them to be. I don't. I'm not the annotation police. Write something deep and introspective or get on the ground. Circling back to the actual books themselves and literature that I've been influenced to read because of TikTok. Commonly, you'll see books being advertised with tropes, uh, which just spoils the entire plot. I thought about this the other day and now I'm genuinely curious. Why do books not have like little tropes at the beginning of each book? Like why can't we just have like a little thing at the beginning that just like tells us just, just a little something so I know if I'm gonna enjoy this book or not. 
For example, when I go into reading a book, I want to know, okay, romance, I got that part, okay? Everybody knows, like, it's categorized as romance. Okay, yeah, I got that. But that's not enough. I want to know more information. Like, on the, right on the inside of the book, can we write romance, no spice? And then I want to know, is it a love triangle? Is it grumpy versus sunshine? Sounds like you want tags, and there's already a place for your kind. If you're pitching a horror novel, it should not be advertised as enemies to lovers. I could write a love story about a horse and a vampire, and as long as I put steamy and friends with benefits, I'd sell out. Me enjoying horrible, awful things, though, uh, read a bunch of these. <laughs> So I have here today a bunch of pain, headaches, and more pain. Going into this, I had loads of options, loads of popular books, and I purposely decided to choose a few interesting ones because I need at least a smidge of entertainment. Starting off strong with a beloved book talk staple, we have Colleen Hoover, an author that writes books in the young adult category. Her books are everywhere at this point. It's inescapable. I could travel 10 universes and still find an entity taking part in her hellscape. I've never seen someone neutrally enjoy a Colleen Hoover book. Uh, you're either a diehard fan or you want to throw her in a salt trap. I'm the second one. If I were of the legal drinking age to take a shot every time I saw a smiling white woman in her late 20s recommending me one of her books, I would cease to exist. I've purposely dodged her books like it was my life mission. I mentally scorned myself if I even dared to linger for just two seconds on a review. I knew once I explored the Hooververse, I would never recover because even though I heard rumors of the dark, perverted, twisted tales that cried inside of those sad, traumatized beige pages, I thought to myself, well, it can't be that bad. It is. And people love it. Colleen Hoover's romanticization, normalization, and glorification of abusive, manipulative, and incestual relationships is very much a problem. A bit of a no-no, especially since her books are marketed towards 13-year-olds. Let's talk about Ugly Love. This book came out in 2014 and a lot of people liked it. I just finished Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. Let's do a review. I recently got hooked on the Colleen Hoover books. I read It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us. So good. Loved both. And so many people said Ugly Love was so good. Overall, I probably enjoyed this more than I enjoyed It Ends With Us, which is very surprising because I loved It Ends With Us. But this was just, oh my god, like I could not put it down. Yeah, the big letters Ugly Love are printed on the front cover, but that did not prepare me for what I was getting myself into. My only experience with this book has been seeing it in romance display cases, and I don't really read much in that genre. So going into this, I was expecting a big conflict of sorts to mess up a relationship that they'd slowly piece together and in the end it would be perfect. So our main character here is Tate and the love interest is Miles, though he dominates the entire book and we barely see Tate. She's very much not important and isn't well described other than how she really likes Miles. The book has these like incremented six year flashbacks that go into Miles' life and just serve as a way to justify how he treats women. Everything starts when Tate decides to move in with her brother. His name is Corbin and he's a pilot that lives in this pilot hotel skyscraper warehouse thing. It's described as an apartment where all of the pilots have to Live, just like all, all of the pilots. So Tate is moving into the apartment while on the phone with her brother and she sees a disheveled drunk man lying against the door blocking entry. Wow, it's Miles. She makes a plan to dart into the apartment and close the door behind her and when doing so slams it on him because he rigor mortises his hand onto her ankle. Her brother is like, oh no, that's my buddy. Let him into sleep. And she does and becomes infatuated with him because he's dark and damaged. Now we are going to dive into Miles' past and try to quickly summarize his collective flashbacks. Miles used to be romantically obsessed with this girl at school named Rachel which ends up being his sister. He takes stalker photos of her and smells her, and she finds all of this to be endearing. At family dinner, Miles' dad invites over a woman he's been seeing for a while now. She also brings her daughter, who is Rachel. Miles shockingly discovers that the girl he has had a crush on is his stepsister, and instead of being disgusted by this, he goes straight to making out with her in the kitchen. The parents get married, Rachel moves into the home, and they are freakishly ecstatic about their newfound, proximity related available activities. Some time passes and Rachel is feeling off so they get a pregnancy test and surprise incest baby. Miles doesn't actually care about her opinions because she's having that weird monster. No other options. Something that's shared across all of Colleen's awful books is that women are worthless. They're simply objects for the damaged male characters and lack purpose unless breathed to life by a man. The problem is she encourages all of this through romanticization. The women in this book tolerate and coddle abusive behaviors. Anyway, back to the story. The two of them end up announcing the pregnancy at a family dinner. The mom doesn't approve, but the dad is ultimately like, that's chill, I guess. The baby pops out, and like any parent, I suppose, they love their demonic <laughs> amalgamation. You know how people usually look at babies and they say, Oh, he has your eyes. He has his dad's nose. What about balls? Thank you for this baby, she says from the back seat. He's beautiful. I laugh. You're responsible for the beautiful part, Rachel. The only thing he got from me was his balls. Oh my god, I know, she says. They're so big. We both laugh at our son's big balls. 
So yeah, seconds after saying this, they got into a car accident and tumbled into a river. They tried saving the baby, but he was strapped in too well, and so he died. Miles and Rachel swim their way onto a boat, and she breaks off the entire relationship because he didn't save the baby. She moved far, far away, and that's what ruined him from ever loving anyone again. We're back to current day, We're talking about Miles and Tate. Rachel is gone. Miles keeps showing up in Tate's life, including a family dinner for Thanksgiving where he cuts himself, and she swoons because he shows no emotion. Tate is taking care of the cut on Miles' hand because she's a nurse, and in the middle of it, he leans forward to make out with her just to pull away and say some Batman ass line I don't remember. It was along the lines of don't let this happen again. It happens again. And with barely any input from Tate, he officiates a friends with benefits relationship between the two of them. This relationship is very odd and there are two rules. Don't question his past and don't have any expectations for the future. She's treated horribly but still sees him as a divine figure. Miles decides to go visit Rachel for some closure and she's like, don't push people away. And he changes into the best man on earth in five seconds. He races to Tate and tells her how he wants to be in a relationship and opens up about his life. Yeah, so I put a baby in my sister and then it totally died and I was really sad and hated women. I mean, I still do, but you put up with it. She is super into him and thinks he's awesome and they end up together. I hated that book and it irked the contents of my soul. There was a lot more explicit things that happened that I can't say on here, but it was bad. If there is a 13 year old near you reading Colleen Hoover, I need you to replace it with this. Another Colleen Hoover book that people love romanticizing is It Ends With Us. Domestic abuse, heart emoji. I'm not gonna go into the story, but just know that she made a coloring book out of it. With her writing, I don't even know how she thought she could get away with this. Oh, hey, bud. What are you coloring over there? Let me see. Nothing. Aw, just like me and my sister. <laughs> I meant mommy. Thankfully, the coloring book was shot down by her publishers, but just last week I saw she's doing a, a beauty collab and in Target. Oh, great. So now I can wear my cute little press-on nails while I'm clawing away at my captor. I mean, partner's eyes. So I don't know about you, but there's nothing poetic about my text messages. Half of it is D threatening me in various vicious ways. Even though it's some of the most lazy, horribly written, mind-boggling garbage I've ever seen, Book Talk loves their text messaged poetry. You left me on red is probably the biggest culprit here. I know we aren't together right now and probably won't be again, but I'll be fine as long as you stay single. So where exactly is the poetry? And it's 6 a.m. I'd leave you on red too. I'm fast asleep catching Z's at that hour. This is just a book of screenshots. It's not poetry. Why are you crying? It's just a poem. No, it's not. It's iMessage. That is a text to a phone number. This sucks. What sucks? Being someone's second choice. You know what sucks even more? What? Not even being someone's choice. I'm confused. Am I supposed to relate to this? You know, this really sucks. What sucks? My mom's in the hospital right now. Uh, you know what would suck more? What? Your mom being dead like mine. Dude, what the hell? I know your life sucks, but mine will always suck more. It's not a competition. I was just And my talking. dog was just ran over. This is not poetry, and it's also not a text message. The cover says you left me on red, but these all say seen. Is this an Instagram DM? You're being heartbroken on Instagram? I can't even help you out because that's deserved. Even though this isn't poetry by any means, I guess I get the relatability factor. Is TikTok marketing truly this easy because I too can open up a text generator and type sad things in for brownie points? The sunshine reminds me of your smile, so yellow. I'm blocking you. Do you know how many copies of that I can sell to lovesick 16 year olds? A garbillion. Can I ask you something? Sure. Was it easy? Was what easy? Leaving me. Saying all that cute stuff and then just walking away like it was nothing. Like we were nothing. Like I was nothing. It's like if Edgar Allan Poe was on Reddit. The fake depth is akin to a kiddie pool. And yes, I've almost drowned in one of those, but guys, we gotta step it up. When Gabby Hanna put this exact same thing out, she was clowned all the way to the outskirts of the universe, yet this can fly. Why do you always do this to me? Do what? We stopped talking for a week, then you randomly text me like nothing ever happened. You get my hopes up and lead me on because you know that no matter how long you ignore me, I will always be here waiting for you. Wow, that was so deep, I can really feel the tears in my esophagus. I need to find a way to dry up the ink reserves so that this monstrosity can never be printed again. Hashtag breakup advice. I don't think letting your whole life and well-being revolve around someone who is uninterested in you is good advice, but okay. As soon as I wake up, I check up phone. Wait a minute, this isn't even a text message. Why is this in here? They were not left on red. Hoping there's a message from you, but there never is. In case you need clarification that this really happened, ugh. It really did. POV, you're just a girl. I'm sorry for being crazy and overthinking nonstop. It's okay, you're just a girl. Again, not even being left on red, by the way. I I'm starting to think this book is lying about everything. I need people to start using this excuse in legal situations. Officer, I didn't mean to behead anyone. I'm sorry for being crazy, but I'm just a girl. Please don't give me a fine for DDoSing the Dunkin' Donuts. Wait, did you just flirt with me? Have been for the past year, but thanks for noticing. I feel like this might be a you problem if you've been flirting with someone for an entire year and they didn't know. 365 days of failed flirting is a nightmare. The next thing TikTok swindled me into reading was the Digital Desire series by Leonard Delaney and wow was it an, an adventure. I usually tend to stray from books that have a lot of spice content but this one made me feel things deep inside certain parts of my body. I had a migraine. Lesson learned. 
don't pull two all-nighters in a row and then read Tetris smut. There are a lot of books in this series. A Whale, Apple Watch, Paperclip, The Physical Embodiment of Copyright, and I mean if I were offered the chance. The main character has like no description and stays the same throughout all the stories, which are very short and mildly concerning. On multiple occasions, I pondered the welfare of the author and if he was just into really weird things or on hallucinogens during his honeymoon. I'm only gonna cover one of his books because they're all the same. And then she has a party with a bunch of human-sized Tetris blocks that have vibrating rods. When you're given such a valuable artifact, it's almost disgraceful not to indulge. So Taken by the Tetris Blocks is a really deep and emotional story about a woman who lives in an alternate universe where huge divine sentient Tetris Blocks have come down from the heavens. They live on Earth and do regular daily duties like working a job. Our main character has been facing harassment from some of these blocks and was very upset, not to mention she had beef with this one block and got fired. So she's getting ready to leave and has to use the bathroom. She goes in and ends up meeting these scandalous Tetris blocks and has relations with them. So yeah, that was a really interesting story. The final book review is another weird one. Stalked by the Boogeyman. Due to the nature of this book, I can't go into much detail, but I'll try. So the Boogeyman is immortal and was placed under a chastity curse by his ex-wife. His ex-wife died, but was reincarnated into this woman as a doppelganger, which is really unfortunate because Big B is mad. He sees the main character and tries to kill her because he thinks it's his wife, but then he realized it isn't. Boogie hates her so much that he just goes around and starts leaving special trails on things. So the girl lives with her grandmother and cousin. The grandmother is a witch and got so tired of men that she just started turning them into crystal objects. She also has a magical broomstick which she uses the end of for pleasurable activities like sweeping the floor for dirt. After some waiting, the main character has finally decided to have jolly relations with Big Boogie, so they go out to the grandma's garden, and because he's been dying to plant some seeds for a while, he ends up flooding the entire garden with fertilizer. He floods the entire surrounding area of their house so severely that they have to trudge through it to get back inside. Yeah, that was it. That was the whole book. Oh, thank god, it's finally over. Now I'm gonna dive into the I'm not like other girls section of Book Talk. Book Talk has destroyed the quality of the publishing market. I'm sick of picking up hype sensational books that are unedited Wattpad fics I would have read at 13. So I do partially agree with this, but I do wish it was phrased better. Has Book Talk totally destroyed the quality of the publishing market? No, but it's definitely affected the variety of books being published. I'll never forgive TikTok for what it's done to literature. Every book just being a generic genre of good girl, bad boy, mafia boss. I miss the books that critique society so hard you felt angry at yourself. I miss when literature actually meant something. That's crazy because it still does. I can understand being fed up with TikTok's romanticization of unhealthy relationships because it is a common occurrence. The amount of age gap books I've been recommended is criminal. Spicy age gap book. Age gap book recommendations. So far in this video, I've mainly talked about my grievances with Book Talk and the bads that it's done, but I'm purposefully trapping you in this box. I think Book Talk's first impression isn't really a good one. To find good authors in diverse books, you have to dig through Colleen Hoover debris, uh, but this person just clearly has TikTok bubble syndrome. It's helped out a lot of new authors, especially in the romance genre, so of course there are going to be a bunch of odd books and amateur novels being written. Yes, even the ones where he stabs a knife into her mattress and tells her to... Okay, maybe not this one. Genuinely vilifying the entirety of book talk is just unfair. Sure, there are some problems that need to be resolved, but it hasn't erased all quality literature. A few laughable concepts or bad books isn't the burning of Alexandria. Half of Gen Alpha can't even spell their own names. They probably had the same reading literacy as Randall. And that guy sucks at reading because he's a bearded dragon. With horrible, god-awful, obsolete methods of teaching being introduced and the book ban in public libraries, it leaves very little room for a personalized selection, so Book Talk is actually a big positive influence. TikTok's aided the best publishing sales we've seen in recent years. I just wish that we could all be more open-minded with the genres we read. Now, I'm sure you're all familiar with the clean girl, dark academia, and Slavic aesthetic. Uh, which is just romanticizing an economic Aww. collapse. Similar to these things, reading has also become an aesthetic. Read whatever you want. If you like romance, then read that. If you like classics, then go ahead. But for some reason, there's a superiority war happening between these two. When a Colleen Hoover fan girly tries to recommend me a book, surprisingly, this joking video is the end of the world. I never fully understood this take because if you're a reader and a book lover, you should be happy that people are reading, whether it's Colleen Hoover or classic literature. But if this is your mindset that like, I'm better than you because I read old classic Russian literature, you don't read because you like reading. You read because you think it makes you better than everybody else. Putting people down for their preferences is shitty, but when it comes to Colleen Hoover, there should be a big, gargantuan, glowing pass. Earlier I mentioned Colleen when reviewing books. We know why she's a problem. Her books are shallow and lack depth, so if you're just getting into reading, I can see why you'd gravitate towards her. It's the people who continuously defend and support her that need to be jailed away. Colleen's books are marketed towards young girls and contribute greatly to their idea of relationships. She normalizes toxicity. If someone wants to poke fun at Colleen's supporters, that's understandable. Her diehard fans deserve to be clowned on. And it's not like this person is ripping on the entirety of the romance genre. For the part where he said we should just be happy more people are reading, wouldn't it make more sense to do good quality things on Book Talk so that the new readers who are just deciding to pick up a book for the first time aren't automatically introduced to Colleen's dumpster fire? I feel like making it more known that Colleen's books are a no-go will help new readers more than hurt them.
You really think you're that much better than me? Oh, I think we both know the answer to that. This is where the classic readers start throwing the war. Colleen Hoover is a bad author, but that doesn't mean the whole romance genre is doomed. I feel like this is just a little pretentious and annoying. You don't hold some sort of superiority because you read Jane Austen. The Dark Academia book that nobody on Book Talk talks about. <laughs> Wow, this book is a real find. I can't believe I'm the only one on Earth to read it. You're not, actually. That's War and Peace, a classic. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Are you handcuffed? Ugh, I'm done with this. Travis! Wait, wait, what's about to happen? Book Talk has an undying itch for influence, so of course the bridge over to Goodreads was mandatory. If you're unfamiliar with Goodreads, it's just a place where you can track books that you've read and leave reviews. It's for readers and authors, though some authors should definitely be banned and kept very far away on a leash. There's this odd trend happening where authors will stalk and harass people who leave negative reviews on their book. One woman left a review on a book that was blatantly fat phobic and the author, Olympia Black, shot back a million notifications tormenting her. Out of all of the immature amateur authors who lurk in the murky Goodreads waters waiting to lash out on any four-star reviewer, uh, and trust me, there's a lot of them. I have to say, Sarah takes the cake on this one. Sarah wrote Three Rivers, a book that I don't even know the plot to because it's that unimportant. After my boogeyman expedition, I'm officially banning myself from reading anything else for this video. Sarah had about eight people read her book before publishing, and one of them gave her a four-star review, so of course she was required by federal law to attack them relentlessly. A perfect five-star average till this bitch came along. Ending was kind of predictable. Yeah, well, it's my life, not a fucking murder mystery. But other than that, it was incredible. So you just gave me four stars... Why? Imagine if I acted this way over dislikes. Oh, dude, I got 2,000 dislikes. Thank God I've got 2,000 grenades. <sighs> yeah, that's right. The part that confuses me the most here is a four-star review is still a good review. This was a really great first novel. Stella's experiences were obviously based off the true stories of the author. And I loved how intricate the details about the show Stella was on were. The ending was kind of predictable, but other than that, it was incredible. It's not like she gave you two stars and said the book was awful. I think authors that cross over onto TikTok are so used to the instant gratification and positive comments that when someone doesn't deliver on an ego suck, it feels like the world's imploding. It's much easier to impress people with a small paragraph and whatever tropes that'll fit into 15 seconds than it is to paste an entire novel. If you can't hand over receiving bad reviews and don't publish a book publicly. Sarah then went on from angry insults to claiming she's a comedian after being dropped by her publishing company. Babe, I'm literally a comedian. You obviously haven't read my book. I feel like dogging on someone complimenting your work isn't very comedic and it's actually just you being a freak. Her most recent update about the book is that it's being turned into a movie, which feels like a giant lie. Because I know you're dying to know. I met with these really cool producers. So just some background for all the new trolls here who don't know my life story. My book was originally a movie that a producer had for three years and we parted ways earlier this year because we couldn't get it made. And so now with all the recent hype, I've been getting a lot of inquiries from producers that now want to make the movie. So now thanks to all my haters, all my dreams are coming true. So the producers that I met with today had some really cool ideas. I really liked where they were going with it, but I only three people that I want to play the lead that I want like negotiated or like signed contracts or anything, but she likes the project. So it's going to be a fun and exciting adventure. And thanks to you guys for giving me all the engagement. So it would pop off like this. I know you're still pissed at me, but it'll be over in no time. I think she's just grasping at straws, desperately clinging on to her five seconds of fame. It seems like this whole thing blew up much more than she was expecting, and now she's settling for any form of attention, good or bad. I've written about three books, and I don't ever plan on publishing them, but, uh, if I did, let's just I'm stay off good comedian. reads. No, but seriously, this level of immaturity over a four-star review packed with compliments and sincerity is crazy. The current young adult industry is extremely misguided, and this isn't an attack on all book talk authors. I think a lot of them are very talented. Many have good writing, while some need to wake up from blindly following a boring, standardized success formula because it sells. Write something creative and new, not recycled, half-plagiarized garbage. Uh, I'm looking at you, the night in its moon. I'd rather read furniture assembly guides until I take my last breath than re-experience that rubbish. And for the Colleen Book Talk mini army, I see you guys. Guys, please reconnect with your loved ones. Colleen Hoover books are not ideal relationships. If you break through the surface, there's actually a ton of good books, so I highly recommend going over and checking out the different pockets of book talk for yourself. If you're looking for some fresh, diverse books, I'm gonna put a link in the description with all of my recommendations. You know what else is gonna be there? My Instagram, where I post my art. Isn't that so cool, guys? Some people were asking where I got my Berserk tapestry in the last video, and yep, I whipped that bad boy up. Also shocked myself a few times because I have a habit of chewing on my Apple Pencil. It is fully demolished. The metal is exposed, but man, it's just so good. So yeah, that's there, along with my Twitter. No way. Wait, please don't go because I'm going to do it first. Bye. <laughs>